You're tuned in to episode four of Hair Biz Radio with myself, Zakira Ficklin, and Mikey. And we have a special guest on with us today. We absolutely love Dallas. He is a national Paul Mitchell educator. Dallas, hey, how is it going? What's up? What's going on? I just sounded so, that was so professional. Y'all just kind of pumped me up like that. <laughs> Well, Dallas, we're on episode four already, so we're pretty much experts we're at podcasting. Pros Apparently. At podcasting. Apparently. I love it. So, you know, having we talked earlier on the last episode how kind of our new schedule was going to be having a guest on the show. And when I was first getting in the hair industry and kind of going for a little bit, I met Dallas through a friend of ours, Latavia. Yep. And Dallas has really helped us out with his education and his knowledge in the business. So it only made sense for him to be the first guest on Hair Biz Radio. Numero uno. Do you like that crowd noise? <laughs> <laughs> we need sound effects. <laughs> so Dallas, I think just so people know, if you could give us a little bit of background, what it takes to be a national educator for Paul Mitchell Ooh. and – just let people know kind of some of your accomplishments and yeah. what you do. How you got in the hair industry. We're excited to Give know. Give us How long is this radio Give show? Because, baby, I've been in this radio uh, show for, I mean, been in this hair business for a long time. So we we don't have that much time. But <laughs> I've been in the industry now for quite some time, professionally since I was 16. I'm 29. I still tell that lie that I'm 29. <laughs> but it's a passion. It's not a job for me. So it's never work for me. And you are right. We did meet. Mikey, some time ago, almost five years ago? No, I think it's four. about three years. Yeah, it's been about three. It's been three? Yeah, three years. Okay, you are absolutely right because I've known her just, for just, going on five. We just stuffed a lot of stuff in that three years. Yeah. <laughs> We've like done a 20. lot in three years. It seems like 20, but no. Um, And I remember meeting you guys on that day when her and her manager came to me and said, hey, you know, we have this hairline that we want to focus on, and Dallas, we need your opinion on it because of who you are in the hair industry. And I was very skeptical about it. And I kind of came in that day with my nose to the air, like, <laughs> mm, you know, because I've had so many hairlines try to approach me in the past. And it was just so incredible to see that everything that was coming out was incredible. And so that began our relationship, which is, yeah. And now we're here. With now a whole we're bunch here. of stuff we're packed in between that. Now. Yeah, I'm stuck. <laughs> I don't want to go anywhere. No, no. So Dallas, tell us a little bit, fast forward to this month, next month. What are some of your plans? I've I've heard you have some pretty cool stuff coming up. I know you're always working with different charities and giving back to the community. You're a leader in the industry as far as training goes. And so many students and actually clients of ours, they all know you because mm -hmm. we say how we work closely with Paul Mitchell in Atlanta. You guys do a lot of testing of our hair and everything else. So just what kind of stuff are you working on now and kind of projects and fun stuff? Gotcha. Well, being a national educator for John Paul Mitchell Systems, a really hard job. I've been with Paul Mitchell and a teacher with Paul Mitchell for 16 years now, teaching almost 10,000 students. Wow. Wow. I, that is incredible. That's incredible. A That's a lot. And being able to say that I've had that journey and still doing that journey is, is awesome. But that journey was very hard. I will tell you, most people think, you know, that being a national educator for John Paul Mitchell Systems, Paul Mitchell, is something simple. No, it's huge. You, you have a lot that you have to know, a lot that you have to gain, and there's a lot of, a lot of things you have to go through to get to that level. And uh, I'm very proud to be able to say that I am a part of that. A couple of things that we have going on, and you were right about working in charities. They come to our school, Paul Mitchell the School of Atlanta, because we're here in Atlanta, and ask for us to do charities such as breast cancer awareness, do charities such as we just did one, which is the children's shelter, which was incredible, like so rewarding to be able to see that these parents who have lost their homes, who have become homeless, and was living out in the park with three and four kids, that they were able to be placed in a home and then placed with a job and then not only placed with a job, but then Paul Mitchell, we come in behind it and be able to do their hair, do their makeup and just really create a beautiful day for them. So 
that's so rewarding to be able to do things like that. Oh, yeah. I remember actually with my nonprofit, Her Foundation, Dallas was the sponsor for hair and makeup with Paul Mitchell two years ago. Yeah, two years yeah, ago. Yeah. And so we had a group of girls coming to Paul Mitchell. They treated them like queens. They did hair. They did makeup. And the girls fell so much in love. So that's one thing that I definitely admire about Dallas and the Paul Mitchell family is they are very active in the community, which Absolutely. is great. Absolutely. Active in the community. And there's nothing that you can say about when you do hair and do makeup and that's your, and what's a better word for it? It's your ministry where you're Mm -hmm. actually behind the chair and you're seeing how it blossoms that young lady, that young girl or that young man, whatever they're going through on that particular day, treating them like that king or that queen. It's so awesome to be able to see that. Yeah. A lot of them have like low self-esteem and then just getting your hair and makeup done and feeling beautiful. It helps a lot. Changes everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. And it changes everything and increases, you know, your confidence in who you are at the end of the day. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, you look at a company like Paul Mitchell that is, you know, built multi-billion dollar company. It's one of the largest for the beauty industry. The obviously. largest. Yeah. The largest. The largest. Okay. The, so, I mean, it's, okay. largest. it's huge, but it's really inspiring for me and admirable because I would love to, you know, we do some charity stuff and we give back as much as we can, but we're still relatively small company, especially relative to Paul Mitchell. But it's, it's really exciting to see a company like that just get involved in so many charities and then also be able to get their employees involved in the different charities and everyone to be able to give back. Yeah. I think it's just so special when you reach a certain level that you can give back. Because a lot of people try to give back when they're kind of not there. And you're just not going to make the effect that when you've gotten somewhere and you can give back in such a big way and get so many people involved. It's really inspiring for me. Yeah. You actually met John Paul what, two years ago? <laughs> yeah, at Bronner, Bronner Brothers. Brothers? At, at, yeah, at Bronner Bronner Brothers. Brothers. At Bronner Brothers. Yeah, yeah. That was, we haven't been at Bronner Brothers in quite some time, and we were invited by the Bronner, Bronner Brothers uh, brand to come back to Bronner Brothers here in Atlanta. And John Paul came in and brought all of his Patron and, and baby, <laughs> when I tell you. Baby. Baby. <laughs> baby. But you know what I love about having an owner? such as him who is a humanitarian and who gives back and who is a multi-billionaire, is his, is his heart. is his heart of giving and that he's so humble. And for the fact that as long as I've worked with him, from first day meeting him, he teaches us or he, he employs us to always remember who you cross, no matter how big or how small, and remember who they are. And so for the fact that years ago when I met him and then seeing him again at another event, at one of our parliamentary events, and he walks by and says, hey, Dallas. And you're like, oh, my God, this billionaire just recognized who I was. <laughs> oh, my God. You know, and it just humbles you down to be able to see that this man is just that awesome and that he instills that awesomeness through, throughout the company. We yeah. Love he seems like a great guy. Mikey, tell us about your experience when you met Jean-Paul. Like, what was your reaction? I mean, it, it was brief, but everybody has that first minute that they meet someone, whether yeah. they're going to like them or kind of what's going on. Yeah. And it was, we spoke for a couple minutes and it was, I mean, it was an experience. Yeah, like, definitely. I honestly, I meet so many people in a day, so many people reach out to me, so I forget a lot and I just try to cram too much in a day. <laughs> but I, I will never forget that moment. We shook hands. We had a photo together. Briefly spoke. He just climbed. I forgot what mountain it is. Is. Mm-hmm. He just climbed some mountain at his age. It was pretty incredible. Yeah. So it was just an awesome experience. And a lot of people don't know he's the same guy that owns Patron. Right. Right. And so there was a lot of Patron there. <laughs> and I always, and one story I do tell a lot, I have to admit, yeah. is it was pretty cool doing a shot of Patron with the, the owner, owner of Patron. Patron. <laughs> the owner of Patron. Yeah. So yeah. that was funny. And just getting back there, I don't know if I was technically supposed to be back there with the Paul Mitchell people, but... We got you. It's kind of like an inside story that when I walk around Browner Brothers, for some reason, I can go about anywhere <laughs> and security never says anything. I just kind of give them my little wave, you know, that little wave I have. Yeah, it's I'm like, here. Hey, yeah, yeah, like hey, hey, what's going on? And they just look at me like, is this guy lost? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know, but and it just got me in. And, you know, Dallas kind of helped. Uh, yeah, definitely. Dallas helped with the yeah. introduction there. So it was definitely a moment. And I, I'll never forget that. And I do appreciate that introduction, Dallas, because I was saying when we started the podcast, my goals were Dallas is definitely number one as far as our guests because this podcast is going to be something consistently we do. And a lot of people are going to know about it just over time because of the great guests we have and the information we put out. But then John Paul is someone, my one-year goal is to get him 
on this podcast within one year yeah. and hear his story because I heard it briefly at the Bronner Brothers show and it was incredible yeah. and it just kind of like you have to hear this kind of stuff and it's such an inspiration. Yeah. yeah. So briefly, we have this Facebook group. It's like over what? 6,000 members now? Almost at 6,000. Almost at 6,000. That's awesome. So in the Facebook group, there's a bunch of people who own hair brands. They want to get started with the hair brand. They don't mm-hmm. want to start. Or they always want to know about like quality control with hair and stuff. So we always tell people that our hair has been tested by the best mm-hmm. in the industry over at Paul Mitchell. So when we get hair in, you know, we test it, color test, all of that. But um, we have a lot of people in the group that ask about hair coloring. Mm-hmm. So let's jump into a couple questions that we've got when in regards to like coloring high or low or like if you have hair that's maybe a 1B, how high can you color it or what products should you use? What's right. some tips that you have on hair coloring? That's a good question. And I get a lot of people who always ask as well about coloring because that's what they want to do. They right. want to see what could it do. And one major thing that I will say first, let me point this out, is that I have colored and played with so many different brands in the past and not got the best results. But the best results that I've, I've gotten is from our private label, taking hair from level one to level 10, because there are only levels one through 10. Right. And being able to safely take it there, still keep the integrity of the hair and get the results that you need. Absolutely. It's done easily. Again, just having the knowledge of what to do, when to do, and how to do. Right. And I get a lot of people who, on that same Facebook, send messages to me, private messages, and say, hey, how, you know, what formula should I use? Or where should I go with this? Or how do I take care of this? And so I get those questions and I answer them as best as I can. But I always have to make sure that I know exactly where I'm starting to know where I'm going to finish. And that's one of the things that we talk about. Know where you start before you know what your finish is going to be. Yeah. Especially in color. What kind of, obviously with Paul Mitchell, they have like the Pop XG and Mm -hmm. some other colors. So what are the main colors that you're working with? Because I can honestly say Dallas, every few months gets called Dallas. I got this new product. (laughs) Uh, I need to give you a few bundles. Can you please color it for me? Like, I'm going to go. I said, Dallas, can you teach me how to color hair in like an hour? And he looks at me literally like I'm crazy. And he's like, Mikey, we're going to need at least four because I really do want to learn how to color hair. And we're actually going to have a salon studio in our new space here in a couple months. That's awesome. So we can't wait to have you there and make some awesome videos and whatnot. So what? tell me a little bit about the actual coloring products. And I know you're all Paul Mitchell, mm-hmm. but if someone is can't maybe find Paul Mitchell in the area, what are what's really the difference between like a professional product uh-huh. and then something you just buy in CVS? Well, again, knowing about diversion, knowing about using a product that is in a CVS, Paul Mitchell products are guaranteed, one, number one. And, of course, you're going to get the results that you're looking for. One of the products that I like to use, especially when I'm doing a lot of lightening, is I go to what is our power horse, which is called our dual-purpose lightener, DPO. And what I would do is go to that lightener, and it's going to give me up to seven levels of lift that I need. That's going to be what I need to move past and get from that level one or that level two up to like a level seven or a level eight or a level nine. And even with double processing, being able to get it to a level 10 and then being able to tone it to get those beautiful blondes that everyone is looking for. One of the things that the reason why people ask me those questions is because if you look on my Instagram, if you look on my Twitter or any, any one of my social medias, I always have blondes. Because that's one of my favorite things I love to do. (laughs) So they go, how do you get that hair so blonde? Well, it's a journey that you have to take. And using products such as Paul Mitchell, they guarantee that you're going to get your results. If it says seven levels of lift, you're going to get seven levels of lift, period. For the clients or customers who are doing their own coloring Mm -hmm. at home and they can't afford that Paul Mitchell color or they don't have access to that Paul Mitchell color, what products would you suggest Mm -hmm. them to use so that it comes out how it's supposed to? Now, see, now that's a question that, <laughs> that you're going to get me stabbed by John <laughs> Paul. <laughs> now, we know that man is a wonderful, nice humanitarian, but you're going to get me stabbed by that man, okay? You know he climbs mountains. But anyway, I can't recommend over-the-counter yeah. product. So let's just say, so I think a lot of them may use like L'Oreal or like Cream mm-hmm. of Nature. Mm-hmm. Would you recommend one of those for? I would say as far as when you're coloring at home. If you're coloring at home, 
one, I am against coloring, coloring at, at home. home. Yeah, because... hey, just look, just take your extensions to your hairstylist. Right. Okay, <laughs> just drop them off at your hairstylist. Uber it to the hairstylist. Yeah, I don't really care Uber. how you Uber want now. want to do it, but take it to your hairstylist. But if this is something that you choose to do, just be mindful of the integrity of the hair, what structure of the hair, and most people at home don't know what the structure. Right. Of the right. Hair. Yeah. They don't know about the amino acids. They don't know about the polypeptides. They don't know about the different bonds that they have to break. They have no idea about it. So they think, oh, I'm just going to slap this L'Oreal <laughs> Ferrier on this hair, and she's going to look like that old singer who's the number one singer, my girl, you know. Cordy. Uh-uh. <laughs> uh-uh. I like her. I like her. I like her. Oh, well, well, you know what? She's not a singer. She's a rapper. She's a rapper. Okay. Because you, you know she has number one. But on you know the baddest yet. chick in the game. We already know who she is. Okay? And we won't, you know. Young. Yeah, you won't find it. You sound like a... So um, with that, you're not going to get that same color that's on the box. You're not going to get that right. same look when you see... And I'm just going to be honest. When you see the J-Lo's, when you see the, the Beyonce's on the box, and they go, I can have that same color. Yeah. You're not. <laughs> J-Lo doesn't use L'Oreal? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm going to get really sad now in the industry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is hilarious. So you did this color a while ago, maybe. It was like a really bright red mm-hmm. color. And, um, I'm loving red now, we've had, I know. It's fall, too, so red is a really great color. But we've had, like, so many people come in the showroom asking about that color red. And so, like, they're like, should I buy the Brazilian 1B hair or should I get blonde hair mm-hmm. and take it to that red? What would you recommend when it comes to, like, going from dark to light or from light to dark? What's your recommendation? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Before we even get into that, first of all, you know what he did that? You know what hair that was? He used our Malaysian, just, like, our absolute cheapest yeah. our <laughs> cheapest hair we have yeah, now is 100% human hair it is so inexpensive yeah but what Dallas did with it <laughs> it looked like it was you know it was million dollar right hair Dallas how the hell did you do that again understanding the structure of hair you don't have to go and spend a whole lot of money to be able to get the results. That's knowing what to do, why to do, knowing the beginning before you have the finish. That Malaysian hair did wonders for what I needed for that particular look that we were going for. You have been asking some great questions. <laughs> Okay, I just have to say that. You've been asking some great (laughs) questions about hair as if you already know about the hair industry or you went through school with me. The easiest way is always to walk down. You can always take something that's at a blonde. The easiest way to get the results you want is to walk down a hair level, going from 10 down to whatever you want. That's the easiest way. But it's not always the most affordable way Mm -hmm. for certain people because it is blonde, flesh and blonde or whatever blondes that we offer at that point in time. But to get something such as a red, you can take the Malaysian because it's only going to the level five. And now I'm going to really speak some knowledge to you. (laughs) Level five. The undertone of color of level five is red. So since I'm going for red, level five going from level one to a level five is only four jumps. With it only being four jumps, I was only needing to get it at least to a level five in my lifting, which was the Malaysian. And then because it already has a red undertone, I just placed more red on top of it. So it's like placing two reds or three reds into it. And so it intensified it. And that's why we had that amazing red on that Malaysian. And it looked incredible. It did. It looked so gorgeous. Yeah, Yeah, I'll get some photos from it because I still have, I think, a couple photos on my phone. And I'll put it in, if you go to hairbizradio.com and then go to episode four, I'll have a couple of those photos in the uh, show notes there so everyone can see kind yeah. of some of Dallas's amazing work. I'll also put some of the other photos in there. I know we made some wigs with the Vietnamese hair uh-huh. and you guys did like the cut and color yeah. and you brought one of your uh, Paul Mitchell friends in to uh, yeah. help style that. I mean, that, those wigs, oh, yeah, that was the fun. dimensions of yeah. those wigs yeah. were so incredible. It honestly made me want to go to hair school. <laughs> now, I, I do not have time. My girlfriend's already pissed that I'm never home because we're working all the time. So I do not have time to go to hair school. But I mean, it was it's weird because Instagram and the social media, I honestly think it can be, it's a little skewed because you see some of these wigs that even some of these huge wig makers, you know, tons of following and everything else, you see it. And it's like when you actually really look at when they go through the hair, I don't know if you guys have noticed this. 
but it's like the dimensions. <laughs> like it looks good. It looks mind. good for the gram, <laughs> but it's like if you really see the wig, <laughs> you know, it's the coloring. It's just there's such a difference. And when I saw these wigs, <laughs> I was just that was incredible. I mean. I don't know about you guys, but am I off here? Silent. <laughs> Why is it so silent? You know what? It's silent because I have so many words I have to say Good about fans. that. But, you know, <laughs> the honesty here is that, and I'm so glad you said about the Instagram stars and nothing against them. I love them. Some of them are some of my good friends and associates that I speak with on, on a regular basis. But there is something that's called filter and there's something that's called angles. And you can take some great angles and some great filters and then you can say this is an amazing wig. Mm -hmm. But once you get that wig and you start looking through the wigs, and I'm not talking about the construction of it because, again, that's a craft that you have picked up how to make a wig or how to put a wig together. It's when you have to color it. And when you have to color it and know the levels and the shades and know the color blocking and know what you're doing that's going to complement each other, and then you're taking some light leather that you bought out of the beauty supply store and slap it on at what about 40 volume on it and you tear up the integrity of the hair and then you have holidays all the way through. And so in the front, it looks amazing. But when you start opening that C and you look in and you see, whoo, what the hell did you just do? But yet and still it's being sold $4,000 from one of those high end, huge following Instagram stars. And some of them, they know who they are. And what I'm doing is calling people to the carpet and say, show me that you've done excellent technical work to create this, not just construct it, but to color it and to cut it. And if you've colored it and cut it properly, which using your proper cutting angles, such as your diagonal four, your diagonal back, your square one length, your round uh, round layers, or your triangular layers, which some of them have no idea what those are. <laughs> or when you start saying that I want to do a balayage, you want to do an ombre, you want to do a melt, you want to do a mesh, you want to do a fall color, you want to do a triple color, you want to do a black color of nine colors. When you start saying that, they go, what the hell are you talking about? Because <laughs> I'm looking at you right now. Right. I think I think most of our listeners might I think most that? of our listeners might be like, what the hell is Dallas talking <laughs> yeah. about with all these terms? I mean, but when you start speaking that and asking those questions, when I start going to some of these hair shows and some of these different events, and I'm one who will raise my hand and go, so you did that cut. And with that cut, it's a triangular graduation. With that triangular graduation, did you over direct forward or backwards? And they're like looking at me like, what the hell did you just say? <laughs> and I'm like, but you cut it. So if you cut it, you should know what you cut. And if you know what you cut, why are you standing here with four, 40, 500, 600 people looking at you? You should be able to deliver proper information on how you cut that instead of saying, well, I just held it back here. Well, where is back here? From what angle? And what level? And then when they say, well, I colored. And, okay, so what levels of colors did you go from? Did you go from level one to a level five, a level five to a level ten? Or did you do a back brush? Did you do an ombre? Did you do – what melting did you do? Well, I just put lightener on it, and it was 30 I put right here. And then I let it soak for about a good two hours. What? <laughs> Okay, so that's kind of a sore spot for me because people are not properly educating the consumers and or the other hairstylists out there on how to really do proper coloring. So, yeah, yeah Mikey, you just threw a knife at me. <laughs> really? But it's so great, though, Stalking. with Dallas because he's been doing this for a very long time. And sometimes when you go to hair schools, it's just like about the money mm -hmm. and it's about getting kids in there to get the curriculum done and getting them out into the world. But one thing I can say about Dallas is out of all the students of Dallas that I've met, they are literally, like, in love with Dallas. Like, they've <clears throat> learned all the techniques that they need to learn. Like, you know, it's like, oh. how did you learn how to do that? It was from Dallas. And, like, they're literally, like, his children. So that's really a great thing when you can be so passionate about yeah. something and all of the people that you touch and all of the people that you work with are directly impacted by that. And, like, they've adopted your craft and they've made it their own and they've put their twist on it and they've learned everything that they needed to learn. So that's really a great thing. Yeah, and I teach them to hold people accountable for what they're teaching and what they're educating out there. So instead of you standing up and saying, I want to show you this, show me how. Show me exactly how. It's better than to sit down because hairstylists, we're so creative, we get bored. And you put us in a room and we have to sit and look at you. We're going to probably fall asleep <laughs> or a lot of hairstylists. Sorry, guys. A lot of hairstylists are smokers. They want to go smoke a cigarette instantly. <laughs> Let me go vape right quick because, <laughs> you know, you're boring me. But if you make them get their hands in it 
you retain the information much better. You keep the information and you're able to have better credentials when you let them help you. One of the things that you were talking about, and I appreciate you telling me that you like how I educate, you guys have seen it. I bring the students in and I let them do the work. Yeah. I let them color hair. I let them put their hands in it. You guys came out and did a, a show with us and uh, you saw how we allowed 40 different students color each section of the hair so they can get an example of how this is going to work, whether they're going to be doing a color melt, whether they're going to be doing a ombre, whether they're going to do a back brush, hills and valleys. They get the experience there. And I didn't become who I became by just going, oh, well, I went and sat down and watched. I'm not going to call out a name, but I watched them and I sit and twiddle my thumbs and this is who I became. I had to make some mistakes. I had to turn some people's heads green. I had to cut some some bangs too short. <laughs> <laughs> I've had to burn some hair off. I've had to burn myself with curling irons. Oh, God, that's a story I have to tell you all in one day. Oh, I had to burn my lips with my curling iron. Yeah, it was really funny. So I had to make mistakes, and through those mistakes, I became better. So, And people think that, oh, well, you're a teacher at school. You know, all you do is teach at school. Uh, heck no. If you really know what I do, I not only teach at a school three days a week, but I also work behind a chair in a salon. I also work on set. I also have celebrity clients. I also have a hairline. I also have a, a class line that I teach where I teach people how to color hair, which Mikey said he was going to come and take that class, which I can't <laughs> teach him in no hour. So I, I have so many different things and then go to different salons and teach them on styling, teach them on coloring, teach them on salon etiquette, which is huge because we have so many of these Millennials, baby, you tell a client, hey, I have a client coming in at five. Lit. Lit. <laughs> Lit. Fat. 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 I'm like, I'm sorry, you have a Buckhead Betty coming in. At, her name is Barbara. She has no idea what Lit and facts are. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, I'm a big hands-on hands-on learner. I'm not visual. So definitely in the hair industry, it's important that you show people versus yeah. telling them yeah. how to do the different techniques that you're supposed to be doing. Right. And I'd also say I'm a religious follower of Dallas's Instagram stories. So that's <laughs> at Dallas Christopher Hair. So if you see Dallas's Instagram stories, you'll see him. He might be dancing a little bit while, while he's coloring hair. While he's coloring <laughs> hair. You know, yeah. da- Dallas is the round brush champion. Um, Let's get it right. It's Dallas. The Round Brush King, yeah. Okay. Dallas, the Round Brush King, round and brush don't King. you ever don't forget you it. Ever forget that title. <laughs> yeah, so it's entertaining but educational at the same time. Yeah. So that's the easiest way for me to learn because yeah, I get I'll just fall off the wayside real yeah. quick just with a bunch of terms and everything else. So being able to see the students and everyone be hands on and then be pumped up and yeah. keep the energy going, it's kind of like. If you ever go to uh, Tony Robbins, yeah. Uh, yeah. so it's like it's like you're tired. It's been a long day, but somehow he, he will just... have you out of your seat. Me, and Mikey, and I, and another one of our friends, and Raj, we we all went to the Tony Robbins conference. And when I tell you, Tony had us for what three hours, just yeah. like yeah. straight Non-stop. pump, Pumped. like get up out of your seat, pumped. It was I amazing. Hate that though. I miss it. I was actually going myself. It was really good. And had another event that I had to go to at the same time, and I was like. No. It was so good. Between him, Gary V, mm-hmm. and Sarah Blakely, yeah. it mm-hmm. was like phenomenal. Yeah. You know, all different stories, all different methods. It was incredible to be there all in one day. I didn't like the in-between people because it was oh, kind of yeah. salesy. It was like a whole sales pitch. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Spend so. this $1,000 and I'm going to show you how mm. to sell a house. Mm. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, so it was just, you know, that part wasn't great. But actually to see them see them live, it's always great to see people live. Yeah. You know, it's right. just a little bit more of the experience. You can talk about it like this more right. opposed to just seeing them, you know, on a YouTube video yeah. or Instagram stories, something Say along that those again. lines. <laughs> a so billion was, times. Yeah, so it was just that energy, though for Tony Robbins was just, and that was my oh, first yeah. time ever seeing him. And I've listened to some of his podcasts, some of his, I've read some of his books, some of the audio stuff from a long time ago, but just to see him in person. Yeah. Oh my God. It like, would be a phenomenal. There's yeah. reasons why that guy can literally pack out a stadium full of people. Yeah. They pay a lot of money to be there. But you know, you think about experiences I'm not really a materialistic person, so I'm all about experiences. And for me, it would be totally worth it to spend whatever the money is to go see him because right. he's got you just amped yeah, huh. the whole time, the whole time. The you entire know, time. It, let's push back and real quick and go back to when you said 
the education on YouTube, and that's one of the, the rising things that's happening right now, and we call it YouTube University. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, we call it YouTube University. So people are going to YouTube to get tutorials on how to do certain things, such as coloring, such as cutting, and things in the hair industry. And that there's a positive there. And there's a negative there. The positive is that people are becoming more aware of how to do their hair, how to style their hair, how to do certain things. So that's great. That's a positive. We want people to get that. The negative is that you have hairstylists who did not get that proper training and or did not go to a school that was kind of higher up on that end. And so they're going to YouTube to get the information there when you really shouldn't. If you didn't get the education, then you do need to seek out continued education from hairstylists who are reputable, accredited yeah. hairstylists, mm-hmm. licensed <laughs> hairstylists. Meaning you went to school. For Meaning it. you went to school and someone didn't just sign something off for you and or that you really do have a license because you can look at Georgia License Board and find their name. Yeah, you can find mine <laughs> on Four Stakes. But anyway, you know. Shameless plug. Uh, uh, wasn't that a plug? <laughs> wasn't that a plug? And wasn't that some shade I just threw? I was getting a real lot of it's petty. Like, it's like a whole, <laughs> a whole swarm yeah, of trees, trees just, just came kind of and flew, flew over, over here. <laughs> yeah, just flew over the pot. It went really dark, but um, like that eclipse a couple of months ago. But anyway, um, <laughs> again, understanding that YouTube is not the university, and you do need to research and go out there and find somebody who is going to be willing to give you the information. I have no problem giving the information as an educator. That's one of the things I'm known for. You just call me up, and I'll give you some answers. I'll tell you what to do, when to do, how to do. And Dallas's phone number is uh, 404. I mean, right? <laughs> <laughs> so many people have it. I mean, uh, I have yeah. about 4,000 contacts on my phone. But, no, I'm easily accessible. You can come to the school. You know where I am at the school. You can come to the salon. I'm in Buckhead. My hangout places, you can just reach out to me. You can hit me up in DM and say, hey, Dallas, I have a question about, you know, round brushing. I have a question about coloring. And I answer those questions. Yeah. Easily. I do have now a new thing now that's called, I think it's Campfire. I think it yeah, is. Campfire. campfire. Yeah, yeah Campfire. Thought. I'm charging you $2 for, uh, for answers on formulas. Oh, you know what? 2.0, tell us about that. Yeah, yeah. I'm charging you $2 <laughs> because I've been giving formulas too much and then getting those responses back saying, oh my God, the color came out amazing. Well, okay. <laughs> Why don't you give everybody your campfire information? Oh, girl, I don't know it. Oh. I'll, but we'll I'll put find, it in the, I'll we'll find it. it I'll put it in the show notes. Yep, yep. But, you know, also, Dallas, I'd mentioned, we've actually, Dallas and I have talked about the education piece, online education, yeah. because Dallas is huge about teaching, huge about everything online. So, you know, I had mentioned that Zakir and I are finally getting to our education platform. We've hired a bunch more staff, kind of getting everyone trained. So it kind of allows us to do more of these types of items. So hopefully you would be excited to hopefully teach some classes on our new education platform. I'm not going to throw the URL out there yet because it's not finished. We're still working (laughs) on some classes. We're still working on some classes, but it's going to be all about the hair industry your knowledge is just A plus, top tier, and we only want the best knowledge on our platform. So that would be fantastic if you would like to be part of it. Absolutely. And we'll have our new studio to film in, so that should make it a lot easier. Hey. Facts. Uh, Facts. Right. We're going to be lit. We're going to be lit. <laughs> we shall be litty. <laughs> litty. We're going to be litty. Yeah. No. So thank you. Thank you for sharing those hair tips with us because a lot of people in the Starter Hair Business group, man, and a lot of our clients that come in, they're just really not that knowledgeable about coloring or how to take care of their hair. So those were definitely great tips. But a little birdie told us that Uh-oh. you have something coming up. Uh-oh. Dallas has been in TV world, a lot of production stuff. Um, and so he has this big project that he's working on. So why don't you just tell us a little bit about the project that you're working on? Well, the project is very cool. It's called Dallas Takeover. And Woo! so... <laughs> We are taking over salons in the city and in other areas in the state. And with that, I'm taking a huge team with me, and we actually take over the salon. None of the salon members work that day. The salon owner gives me the keys, and we do a charity event where it goes to American Cancer Society for Breast Cancer Awareness. That's going to be amazing. And we're filming it. So it's filming from the beginning to the end so that we want to bring a positive reality. You know, you have so many reality shows where they're catty. And you come on, cattiness and, and pettiness, <laughs> it sells. It really does. And messiness, it does sell. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. <laughs> but we want to give you comical catty and give you 
good spirits at the end of the day that you know that what we did was for a huge cause, and that is to really, really find a cure for breast cancer. Many people don't know that I lost my mom to breast cancer 16 years ago, and that's why it's so important. Yeah, that was my next question. Yeah, so that's why it's so important to me in that each year I do a Tickle Me Pink fashion show where I use only breast cancer survivors, whatever stage they are in cancer. And we do a fashion show where we make them look good. Again, back to it saying, giving them hair, giving them makeup, having them dress up in pink, changing the outlook on who they are on the inside. And that cancer is not going to be the end of the world for them. Right, right. You know? Yeah. So we recently actually, Private Label Extensions, just partnered with an organization here in Atlanta, Painted Pink, and we did a giveaway for a makeover for a breast cancer survivor. Mm -hmm. And um, Dallas was actually the sponsored um, hairstylist. And then we also have a makeup artist, um, DZ Exclusive. So with the makeover, you know, the lady called us and she was just so excited. She was crying on the phone. She was like, you know, it's just really been that point and I need this now. And I'm just so grateful that I won. And so she's super excited to meet Dallas and the whole team and ready oh. to get the makeover done. So that's one of the things that we, we love over at Private Label Extensions that we've been getting more into is, is charity work and, you know, making people feel beautiful because we do have the products to do that. So. Right. Right, right. And sometimes people need to understand it's not about how well you can do hair, about, oh, I can, you know, slay this girl hair. It's mm-hmm. not about that. It's about who you are. It's yeah. about who you are on the inside. And people, hairstylists, guys, believe this, believe this in hair world. If you have a great heart, If you're an amazing person, you are very humble, and you are a great person to be around in that arena, in the salon, you cannot be the greatest hairstylist, but you will have a full book Mm. because of how you treat people. Oh, yeah. I think the other job of a hairstylist is to be, like, someone that speaks life into your client. Like, they're sitting in your chair for hours, and, you know, they may be talking about things, and your job is to help make them feel better while they're with you. While they're with you. So being able to perform an excellent consultation, being able to turn that situation around, and being able to give that experience for that guest, whether it's for an hour, two hours, three hours, that they love being there. It's profound. A man will come to the same barber for 20 years. He can cut a hole in the back of his head and he can say, <laughs> Dallas Christopher, but he'll be back next week. Talking about, bro, I know it's good. I'm good. But he'll be back next week. You know, or bro, you cut a hole in the side of my head. <laughs> But he'll be right back the next week because it's the relationship. Yep. Definitely. It's the relationship. It's not about how great that hairstylist or that barber is. It's the relationship. And granted, yeah, we got some hairstylists who are amazing. I got some students that can turn circles around some of the best hairstylists out there in the industry. But it's about developing them inside. Right. And so once I get that, then I can let them out of my wing and say, there you go, fly. Yeah, yeah. But then they don't fly. They won't. They don't go away. <laughs> like, I told you they, they always go away. Damn, Dallas They're is like little Dallas mess. Is I mean, I keep pushing them out, and then they fly right back, going, "Okay, I'm back." <laughs> I'm like, "What? You're making money? Like, it's so funny." Let me just say this real quick. There is one that was with me five years ago when I first got here, and that particular one is now a teacher, just like me. Oh wow! Does work on set, just like me. Does have a huge celebrity clientele, just like me. Makes just the same amount of money I make. I think this boy make more than I do sometimes, <laughs> but still come to me and say, Hey, I need to know about this. Hey, let's talk about this. And so he respects who I am as a father in the industry to him. He respects that, but yet still he's, he's outgrown me. He's better than me. And that's what as an educator, I have to be, I have to make you better than me, not make you like me, make you better than me, make yeah. you higher than me. And that's where I get my gratification because I look back and go, you're doing the Creasleys, baby. Huh? <laughs> huh? You're getting that good paper today. Oh, you, Liddy. <laughs> and not with you. <laughs> so that's, that's so rewarding at the end, end of the day to be able to see your students grow bigger than you are. That's, that's just so rewarding. I, I can't even express. I'm almost about to cry because my child Aww, doing so good. Dal. You know? yeah, my nickname for Dallas is Dal. Yeah. <laughs> oh, somebody else in the industry has that nickname for me. You know, She'll she, be okay. Okay, Miranda, you will be Miranda okay. Miranda will be okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Too funny. Too funny. So, Dallas, before we wrap up, if you could just maybe give three tips to new hairstylists. They're just starting out. They've just graduated school, hopefully. 
they're just hitting the ground. They're going to be a little discouraged because they might not have like a huge following to mm-hmm. get a bunch of clientele. They need to bid up their clientele. What are three tips that you could give somebody that's just getting started as a hairstylist in the industry that will help them for the long run? Good question. First thing, do your research. Do your homework, especially if you're going into an area of a salon. Do your homework. One of the things that I tell them in that do your homework is go sit in the salon and get your services done there before you actually get hired there. And so you can watch and see how everything operates in the salon. If it's not like you or doesn't smell like you or if they operate on a different level than what you operate in personally, this is not the salon for you because you will be Unhappy. Yeah, that's great. That's, you know? a, great that's a really Yeah, I never even thought I about that. I never one. would have thought about that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the first thing I tell them to do. The second thing I tell them to do is lose the I am the slayer of hair <laughs> attitude. I tell them to lose that because you're going to have to be humble enough to walk up to anyone mm-hmm. and do some pro bonos. Offer some free services. Offer some free hair because your client is your billboard. So Go to the grocery stores. Go to the other places that of the clientele that you want and pass out cards and let them know. I call the sandwich way. I first told someone, oh, my God, your hair is amazing, even though it really isn't. <laughs> your hair is amazing. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> oh, my God. it's so. And so now I've got you because now I've given you a compliment. And then go, I'm a hairstylist, and I would love to round brush your hair because, I mean, your thick, full hair. She ain't got no hair. <laughs> your thick, full hair will just round brush beautifully. And then I can see colors of pops of blondes right in the front, you know, like a Sierra does. You know. <laughs> right. And I throw that at them, and then now I got you. Right? So after I got you with that, the next time you go to your hairstylist, and your hairstylist is not available, who's on your mind? Dallas Christopher. Dallas Christopher. So that's the other tip I tell them. So that's the second tip. And then my third tip, never get too big. I have, he asked me that. And that's, this is real stuff I tell my students. Never get too big. And remember where you came from. Remember where you came from. Always. Because you never know. This industry is so small. They think it's huge. They think it's so huge. And, and say, Zakira, you work at the salon 14 miles away, and I work with you. And then uh, she get on my nerves. Child. She tear my nerves up. She don't know how to do it on her head. She's this and she's that. And then she's going to go work on this person, stylist. It's going to go work on Tyler Perry. And you are over the hair department at Tyler Perry. Oh, yeah. Never burn bridges. Never Ever. burn that's Bridget. life. <laughs> in, it is life, but definitely in the hair industry because we're so close knit. You have no idea how well we know each other. Very well. So never burn bridges. So those are my three tips. All right. I, those I mean, are good. That's, that, oh, yeah, that's good. Tips. I hope everybody's taking notes. Yep. So the, the first one was do your research. Do your research. Yep. Do your homework. And then the second one is mm-hmm. the sandwich rule. Right. Sandwich yep. rule. Make sure you go in and you give them a compliment. Once you give them a compliment, then throw out your information. Never, ever lose that fear. Lose that fear of, I can't go and talk to anybody. You have to go talk to everybody. Right. Because this is what the industry you do. You are talking to people. So you have to lose that. And then the third one, never get too big. Never get too big. Don't you burn your bridges because yep. you never Mikey, know who you're going to need to help with. great tips. Yeah, I think yep. just in, in more than just as a hairstylist. Pretty Those much are life. Life lessons right okay. there. But yeah. applying it to hairstylist life is pretty good. Yeah. Yep. I don't know about you, Zakira. I feel like, honestly, Dallas has so much information. I, know, I can we literally can sit here just, for I can sit here forever. <laughs> and, you know, I start thinking about occasionally we'll get somebody that sends in a photo and is like, oh, my God, the hair. It'll be some like our best hair, the Vietnamese hair that oh, colors yeah, the best. Yeah. And they'll be like, this hair isn't good. Look what I did to it. I'm a hairstylist and this, that, the other. And I'm just like, I send them photos of some of the other. Work. Dallas did it. <laughs> Dallas did it. Like, literally, we, we get not a lot of calls, but some. And I'm just like, user error. Like, this hair has been tested by some of the best in the industry. And it can be colored. Like, it, be colored. it definitely can be colored. So, um, yeah, a lot of people just, they don't know how to color. Right. Right. Yeah, I or, think the education on coloring. Mm-hmm. And just me, obviously, I don't wear hair. Right. I hope not. Well, <laughs> no, I could, but you know, it's funny because I think it honestly gives me advantage mm-hmm. in the hair industry and selling hair because 100 percent, it does not matter what, what I think, think about yeah. the hair. <laughs> right. It does not exactly. matter the textures of this, the that, the other. It doesn't matter. It's 100 percent feedback from our top clients and customers that let me know what, Mikey, this is good, or no, 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 no. Because before we put anything out, because we have to buy so much to put something out, we always have to put it through tests. 
Right. And whether you're working with private label extensions or not, if you're testing out other vendors, make sure you test the hair. I know a lot of problems in dealing with people overseas, and I've been doing business overseas for about – dozen years now, mm-hmm. it, you got to be also be careful of that bait and switch because they will send you some nice bundles on your test order mm-hmm. and all of a sudden you put in that $5,000 order and it's literally junk and then people are like, oh, I'm going to try to return it to China where they don't care about you. <laughs> right. All of a sudden the email bounces back yep. and other stuff. Oh, I mean, honestly, man. it's happened to us. But I think we should definitely do a, another episode with Dallas here in the coming months as we continue to grow. And we would love to have feedback from our listeners of what kind of information you would love to hear from Dallas. Because if it's anything about hair, Dallas knows it. Yeah. So we would love the feedback. You can uh, also subscribe. Secure? Subscribe. We always forget to say subscribe. You know, they always say like, oh, in the beginning of your coming, podcast, coming. in the beginning of the podcast, uh, but yeah. like we get, we just get so wrapped into it. We're so yeah. excited that we don't tell people to subscribe, but make sure you subscribe. Make sure you subscribe. We'll have some giveaways coming in the near future, but if you're not subscribed, you you're may gonna... not get those opportunities. Right. I think the next episode, let's do a giveaway. Let's do a giveaway. Okay. Hey. So next episode, we're going to come up with a nice little giveaway. Can I say what the giveaway should be? No. <laughs> Make sure you're following Dallas Christopher on Instagram. That's the best place probably, right, Dallas? Yes, that's the best place. Instagram, Dallas Christopher Hair is my tag, and it does connect everything from Facebook to Twitter to Tumblr to you name it, all of it, I guess. Is it Tumblr? I don't know. I don't think it's Tumblr. It's no. not. No doubt. Okay. No, I think it is. <laughs> no. Uh, it's not. Uh, listen, listen. I have someone, is laughing at right, I have someone who runs my stuff for me because I'm so engaged because I work seven days a week that I I, I don't know. So yeah, it's Tumblr. All is that even still? A thing? Is it something? No. It's okay. Not. <laughs> Did I? And you laughed at me. See, that's a millennial laughing. That's probably like me saying I have MySpace. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, wait, what's MySpace? What is MySpace? <laughs> She's like, I have I my own space. I have my own space. about my space? It used to be a thing, and we had, like, the top eight, uh-huh. and your friends would get so mad at you when you weren't in the top eight. It's like, I only have eight spots. <laughs> like, I can't get you. Or if, like, they're not the top number one, it's like, geez, you're in the top eight? Calm down. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah I, it's just I, I, amazing I how things that. evolve. Even in the hair industry, it's, it's ever-evolving. It it's ever-evolving. It always changes, and, and you just have to always stay current. Yeah, definitely. But it's been amazing. Amazing having Dallas hang out with Mikey and I today on Airbiz Radio. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I hope you guys got a ton of information because he definitely shared a lot. We're definitely going to have him back on in the coming months, like Mikey said, just to share some more pointers with you in the hair industry because he's definitely a vet in this thing. <laughs> so make sure you guys subscribe. And if you think you'd be an amazing guest like Dallas on our podcast, Go to hairbizradio.com and then hit the contact section and send us a little message. We'd love to hear from you. Definitely. So next time on Hair Biz Radio, we will have great information. On consumer fraud. Yes, that's a big one. Because it's prevalent in the hair industry. And it is honestly the thing I hate most about this industry. Yeah. And I have a lot of ways to stop these scammers. And if more people do <laughs> what I say, Joanne the, the scammer, yeah, like you're going to be much better off. So you're going to see that episode coming out here shortly. I don't think Mikey knows who's Joanne the I don't scammer. know about all that, but that's fine. Oh. I'm in my Caucasian house. <laughs> my Caucasian home. Yeah, my Caucasian home. No, no, uh, that's funny. Yeah, that's going to be great. You know what? We never talked about the fact that I said I did radio and I wanted to do my radio voice before we left with hair biz. Can yes. I do it? Yes, Dallas. Well, all right, Dallas, do the radio Dallas voice. Dallas is going to close us out today. Da- close us out, D. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Good afternoon. I want to say thank you guys for joining us on Hair Biz Radio here with Mikey, Zakira, and Dallas. See you next week. That was so good. (laughs) Bye, guys. Bye.